Maharaj, uh, what is the role of discipline? Because in the name of uh, discipline, we sometimes mistreat. Or else in the institutionalized way, like in the ashram or in the temple, there are certain rules and regulations. There are certain parameters which devotees have to follow. And if we see if people are not practicing, we react in two ways. We say, oh, must be a great devotee and we don't discipline. And the things become very watered down. Or else we react an extreme way by disciplining them and mistreating them. So how do we balance? Because there is always a confusion. That Yes, it is very complicated actually. <laughs> I can cite many such examples. Where I lived previously, many years ago, there was one devotee. He was so different. He would be on a roof <coughs> in the winter covered with snow and he'd see you know a sannyasi come by and he would just like scream out you know my obeisance is to you and he would just do his just fall flat dandavats and slide off the roof onto the ground <laughs> we saw it with these eyes and then he's get he's all you know bloody and everything and he just goes back to work we're in the you know in a muddy place it's storming rain it's muddy he's just outside sannyasi goes by my obeisance is to you and he just falls not goes down on his knees just falls like a stick falls right in the mud it's totally soaked in mud from head to his clothes are saturated and he goes back to work these are the normal things that he would do <laughs> and the devotees thought that he was an avaduta so they were actually honoring him and almost worshiping him as an avaduta but then some years later we found out that he had mental illness and he was in a mental hospital that's the only way he could survive is under the care of a mental hospital he wasn't an avaduta he was mentally ill but devotees just wanted to see him as being advanced so that was their vision until it just became out of control so you know that is a lack of discrimination if a person is misbehaving, causing harm to him or herself and causing harm to others, then you know, we must discriminate. Especially in a place like an ashram or temple where certain codes of conduct are necessary to be followed for our own benefit and for the, for, to not disturb the spiritual welfare of others. But they should be enforced, even if it's necessary to be strict, it should be with compassion. It should not be in an egoistic, judgmental way, and it should not be with harshness. Prabhupada could chastise a person, but it was always with love, always with respect, always with compassion. Sometimes devotees were very, very, very disturbed about how another devotee was doing their devotional service in a different way. Prabhupada would give that person his own space so he wouldn't disturb other devotees but he would engage them in devotional service because he saw that they were sincere. They just had a different vision. So we have to be very careful. We have to maintain the standards with proper discriminatory quality, but at the same time we have to do it in a way that we're honoring and respecting that person as a Vaishnava also. It should be done with dignity. You know, you could beat a person up and throw them out of the temple door if they're misbehaving, or you could say, Prabhu, we're sorry, but you cannot stay here any longer. And there's nothing more to discuss. And we will offer you all best wishes and prayers to, you know, to improve. In any way we can help you improve, but you cannot live here now. There's a difference. But at the same time, that person who may be having troubles now, who may not be fit, you may be touching his lotus feet after some years. And Krishna sees the purpose in which everything is being done for him. And ultimately, even if we make mistakes, if our purpose is sincere and we're willing to rectify, Krishna is going to uplift us and empower us. That is the reality. Our beloved Stoker Krishna Prabhu, he was really spaced out. <laughs> and, you know, the brahmacharis even, they didn't know whether to take him serious or not for many years, yes? But like Vritrasura, when it came close to death, he, re he revealed 
such exalted spiritual qualities. He even had difficulties in his devotional service. He had some serious difficulties. And some devotees were losing their respect for him because he wasn't really so strong. But his purpose was sincere. Even though he was struggling and losing some of the battles, his purpose was very, very sincere. And in the end, some of the staunchest brahmacharis were crying. If only we could be as renounced as him. In that painful condition where he's about to lose everything at such a young age, he only had gratitude and happiness in his heart. That Krishna gave me the chance to serve him. Krishna gave me the chance to chant his holy name. I didn't deserve it. I have no attachment for anything. All I want is just to serve. That was genuine. The same devotees who were his superiors, who used to chastise him, who used to criticize him in their minds, were touching his feet because they realized he's better than me. He's going back to Godhead. I don't know where I'm going. And when these hippies came in to Prabhupada, he saw what they were doing, what their conceptions were, and what their misconceptions were. But he gave them the chance. And for a person to become so, so completely surrendered and so empowered so quickly means that that person had tremendous spiritual credits from his past life, but they were totally unmanifested until they came in contact with a pure devotee. A couple years, just two, three years after a devotee is just a, living like that. Prabhupada saying he's an eternal associate of Lord Chaitanya. This is the glory of a Vaishnav. Let me be your puppet, my Lord, and use me as you like. And this is the Lord's will to utilize his devotee in such a way for the welfare of everyone. And as far as all of us are concerned, we have to be very careful not to commit offenses, not only to Vaishnavas, but to anyone. Because practically every Vaishnav that you know today was not a Vaishnav sometime before. So don't commit offenses to non-devotees. Don't commit offenses to devotees. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I will send you back home, back to Godhead. Just do not criticize others and chant the holy name. Hey!